Hello everyone, I'm Santaneka. Nice to meet you. Today, I will be installing Stable Diffusion on Ubuntu 24.04. I have just installed Ubuntu 24.04, and in the video, we are checking the version of Python. This installation method is the same for Windows WSO as well. Ubuntu 24.04 has been released on the Microsoft Store, so why not give it a try? After the explanation, we will proceed with the demonstration. Let's get started! It seems that the version of Python is 3.12.3. However, the installation of Stable Diffusion Web UI fails with Python 3.12.3. So, by using PyAnt, we can manage multiple Python versions and switch between them easily. Installing this allows you to focus on various projects without worrying about version compatibility. Some people might think this upon hearing it. Well, if that's the case, why not just downgrade Python? Previously, when I was installing Stable Diffusion on Windows, downgrading Python was easy, so I just thought I'd ask. In Linux, Python is often integrated as a crucial component across many distributions. The reason I don't downgrade is because Ubuntu 24.04 has just been released and not all software may be fully compatible yet. Certain development tools and libraries might unexpectedly cause issues. Ubuntu comes with Python pre-installed by default, so there is no need for additional installation work, allowing you to start Python projects immediately. This is different from Windows, where Python is not pre-installed. Let's give it a try. Yes, please go ahead. Oh, but first, let's check if the CUDA toolkit is installed. It's usually not installed. By intentionally entering the wrong command here, we can check the version that gets installed. Now, it becomes clear what needs to be done to run Stable Diffusion. First, before installing PyNV on the Ubuntu system, we need to install the required dependency packages. However, some people might still have questions about this process. What should someone do if they want to know the meaning of these packages? Well, I don't think there are many, but I have explained this in the links provided in the video description. The main purpose is to allow those who want immediate results to copy and paste easily. I plan to install PyNV after installing the dependency packages, but in the video, I mistakenly edited the environment variable configuration file first. Should I thoroughly understand environment variables? For the future, it's better to grasp the concept as well. I feel uncomfortable proceeding without understanding, so I make it a point to verify as much as possible. I have also described what environment variables are and why they are set in the link in the description section. Now, I will enter the command to apply the current changes. Since I postponed the installation of PyNV, it resulted in an error. Therefore, I will now proceed with installing PyN. I will now apply the environment variable settings that caused an error earlier. This allows us to install the desired version of Python. The version of Python needed to install Stable Diffusion is 3.10.6. I will use PyNV to install this version of Python. As mentioned in the message, I am downloading directly from the official website. It seems to take a fair amount of time. The commands are also quite unique. It's convenient that users don't need to manually download and install files. Yes, I agree. Next, I will set it to this version of Python. Just to be sure, I will check if this Python version has become active. Now that the desired Python version is available, I will set up the CUDA toolkit. But first, I will check the status of the display driver on this computer. I've just installed Ubuntu. I have previously uploaded a video about how to install it, so please take a look if you are interested. Furthermore, the information displayed by the next command is important. Simply put, it is a command line tool for monitoring and managing the status and performance of NVIDIA GPUs. The version of CUDA displayed by the command represents the maximum version supported by the driver, and it appears to be 12.2 for this computer. 
With this in mind, I would like to install the CUDA toolkit, but there is still no notation for Ubuntu 24.04. What is the CUDA toolkit? I hear it occasionally, but I don't really understand it. The CUDA toolkit is a development kit provided by NVIDIA, which includes tools and libraries for performing parallel computing using NVIDIA GPUs. By using this kit, developers can leverage the computational power of GPUs to significantly enhance the speed of program execution. The CUDA toolkit is essential for providing the high computational power and efficiency required in the field of image generation AI. Therefore, I will install the CUDA toolkit from the Ubuntu repository instead of the official source. Indeed, a lot of preparation is needed for image generation. This will be a learning experience. Yes, after installing the CUDA toolkit, we will proceed with the installation of stable diffusion. It might take some time, but I expect the installation to proceed without any issues. Actually, there were no errors. Let's check the version of the installed CUDA toolkit. It seems that version 12.0 has been installed. I will create a copy of the app on my computer using the GitHub page for Stable Diffusion Web UI as a reference. This command is very handy, as it allows not only for cloning the app, but also for synchronizing updates and managing versions. In the video, I will install the latest version, but installing a specific version is also possible. So if you have a reason for needing a particular version, this method might be worth trying. This applies, for example, when that version does not support certain extensions of stable diffusion. Additionally, you can use Git to manage multiple versions of applications. Upon hearing this, some might think, why not just create multiple directories on my computer? Indeed, that's one way to do it, but it would consume a lot of disk space. It might be better to use Git branches, which can save on storage capacity. If you need to customize a significant number of environments, it might be better to create multiple Python virtual environments. Next, we will create a Python virtual environment, which helps keep your computer organized. It's easy to delete later, and that's surprisingly convenient. I actually realized later that when you run the script for this project, it automatically creates a virtual environment if one doesn't exist. However, for some projects, you may need to create it yourself. So let's learn how to do it manually. The current state of the video shows the creation and activation of a Python virtual environment. Now that everything is set up, we will run the script. So, since we've created the virtual environment manually, the script won't create it twice, right? Yes, that's correct. It seems we were overthinking it a bit. Also, it looks like there's a message in red text. That looks like some kind of warning. Things rarely go smoothly, do they? We'll address it later. Although a message appeared, it seems to have started successfully. Let's check if we can create an image. It looks like the image was generated correctly, which is a relief. Upon investigation, it seems that the previous warning message indicated that the application couldn't detect something. Apparently, it is part of the Google performance tools, which can improve application performance by enhancing memory usage efficiency compared to the standard memory allocator. I will check again after the installation. Oh, the warning message is gone. It feels like it might be faster now. Image generation on Ubuntu can be achieved using these installation methods. The same method can be used to generate images on Windows WSL, so why not give it a try? The device here is different, so the CUDA version displayed is different, but since it's the same Ubuntu 24.04, the same version of the CUDA toolkit was installed. The version of the CUDA toolkit installed directly on Windows is 11.8 but it is generating images correctly.
There is also a method to create a Python virtual environment directly on Windows without using WSL. Which is better? I seek higher performance and stability. I see. That method is also an option. When choosing between using Python via WSL or creating a Python virtual environment directly in Windows Command Prompt, several factors need to be considered. Both methods have their pros and cons, and the final choice depends on your project's needs, environment setup, and personal preference. If there are dependencies specific to Linux, or that the project is intended to run in a Linux environment, WSL is suitable. If performance is critical and Linux-specific tools are not needed, then creating a virtual environment in Windows Command Prompt is appropriate. I see, I understand well. That's it for now. See you all next time. Goodbye.